once around Barnard's Loop. So Barnard's Loop is an enormous structure in the sky in the constellation of Orion. It's listed in the Sharpless catalogue of H2 regions of ionised hydrogen forming nebulae and gets the catalogue number SH2-276. So I've drawn Orion over there on the right hand side with the Orion Nebula ringed in uh, red there at M42 but it's not the Orion Nebula we're talking about. We're talking about the photograph on the left and the enormous loop that goes from above Orion's belt all the way curving round to the left down towards the region between the two stars at the bottom of uh, Orion there, Safe and Rigel. Lovely picture. So first observed very early on actually by uh, ancient observers but it was E.E. E. Barnard who was the first to put it in a catalogue and hence it's called Barnard's Loop. And this is a drawing from uh, the publication Popular Astronomy um, in 1894 so it goes way back and you can see Barnard's loop outlined there in the rendition it's uh, not the best photograph um, it's actually a drawing and uh, it's quite amazing that uh, it's really quite accurate so it's part of the Orion molecular cloud again lovely picture of it looping from above the belt round to the central lower part of Orion there We've got Rigel at the top left. We've got the belt stars in the middle of Al Nitak, Al Nilam, and Mintaka. We've got Rigel at the bottom right. You've got the sword handle with the uh, famous Orion Nebula in the middle there. You've got the Witch Head Nebula, the white streak down to the lower right, um, uh, being lit up by the power of Rigel there. And this image was Astronomy Picture of the Day, published on the NASA website back in 2010. It's uh, amazing, and you can see the author's name there. I think it's uh, so good he needs an individual credit for that one. So, looking at it, it's huge, covering 10 degrees of sky all the way down the left-hand side of Orion. You can see it in perfect conditions. Clearly, Barnard was able to spot it. But a camera with a long exposure is really what you need. A telescope will be no help at all because a telescope will have such a tiny field of view that you just won't be able to tell what you're looking at. For this you need a camera with a really quite uh, short focal length lens, maybe 50 millimeters, maybe 28 millimeters. Crank it wide open and do a time exposure and you should pick up all of these features in this photograph um, and if you can do a whole series of them and stack them together perhaps you may be able to get a picture as good as this just with a camera it's a, a very well worthwhile target for amateur astronomers it's about 1400 light years away that's roughly the same distance of a lot of the objects in and around Orion in fact 1400 to 1600. It's somewhat tricky to measure the distance to these nebulae. You tend to have to find objects that you know are embedded in them and measure the distance to those. And for a Barnard's loop, that's a particular challenge. And 1400 light years away, 360 light years long in that semicircle that we're looking at in the photograph there. So physically, it's an emission nebula, it's hydrogen gas that is being ionized by ultraviolet light coming from the hot bright stars in the core of Orion's nebula. The ultraviolet hits the atoms, excites the electrons into high energy states and then as they cascade down the energy levels they give off characteristic wavelengths of light and the one that we see as the pink color there is the hydrogen alpha line at 656.28 nanometers and it's part of the series of lines there are those other ones in the uh, turquoise color the blue and into the violet and they get closer and closer together in a very predictable characteristic way that quantum mechanics can explain uh, extremely accurately a lovely high contrast picture here taken by an amateur astronomer and it's uh, enhanced the red so we can see the hydrogen gas. You've got the 
bright yellow white bit of the Orion Nebula in the middle, lots of the glowing hydrogen Barnard's loop and then Lambda Orionis up at the top and there will be a separate video about Lambda Orionis coming. So what do we think is going on here? Well what we believe is that there was a supernova explosion about two million years ago in the Orion Nebula region. And the animation on the right here is an attempt to show what a supernova would look like. It's an animation of the Crab Nebula. It's somewhat cheating, but it uh, gives you the idea of this expanding shock wave. And that's what we're seeing two million years down the road as Barnard's Loop. And we think that supernova also created a number of runaway stars. And I have a video called Runaway Stars that talks about them. There are three stars in particular, A.E. Auriga, Mu Columbi, and 53 Ariatis, that we think are travelling away from this explosion, hurled out by the violence of it. They were all once part of a cluster formed in and around Iota Orionis and one of the members of that grouping blew up two million years ago, created Barnard's Loop and sent the material hurtling outwards and caused these stars to become runaways charging away in different directions that all point back to this explosion. So, 1,400 light years away, now, 2 million years ago, the distance would have been slightly different, and there is considerable evidence on the Earth that we did suffer a uh, side effects of a nearby supernova about 2.5 million years ago. Was this the one? We're not sure. It may have been, it may not be. The dating on these things is a little bit variable, so it's quite hard to be certain, um, as is always the case. Measuring things is hard, um, but you can stitch up a story together around it that seems plausible, at least. The reason that we think this supernova occurred is we find in the sediments in the bottom of the ocean and in the bottom of Lake Tanganyika, you dig down through them and you take a core and you know the age of the core at different layers and we find that around that 2.5 million years ago there is a layer containing radioisotope markers from the iron 60 that is the radioactive form of iron that is prevalent in these sorts of exploding stars and I felt this was so important I did a whole separate uh, story about it so there's a video on that called did a new nearby supernova trigger a burst of rapid evolution because there's quite a lot more to that story. So possibly all associated with Barnard's Loop. So again another picture of Barnard's Loop and just some other objects in and around that area right in the center there by uh, we have Orion, the Orion Nebula looking fairly white and above it around the star at the left of the trio of Orion's Belt that's the star Alnitak. You have the glowing hydrogen with the flame nebula just to the slight right and sorry, slight left of Alnitak and slightly higher. And then on the right and lower, you have the ridge of glowing hydrogen with that dark finger of dirty material creating the horsehead nebula. Maybe I'll do a whole separate edition about the horsehead nebula. And I did mention there is going to be a talk about Lambda Orionis when I finally finish it. So-called Angelfish Nebula up at the top of Orion. Another possible supernova, so look out for that one. And just finally to finish off about Barnard's Loop, I do like to look for mentions of these things in sci-fi. And this one's particularly favourite of mine. This is an image from Elite Dangerous, um, the Elite computer game written by a friend of mine by Frontier uh, which is owned by uh, David Braben who I've known for nearly 40 years and uh, Barnard's Loop is part of the Elite Dangerous game so a plug for Elite there. So thanks very much for listening and I'll leave it there and do look out for those other videos that I've mentioned. Bye for now.